Hey there, it's me, Stacy. I'm going to do a little tutorial today on how to tell what you're doing wrong on your painting. So you can use these makeup filters and it will really help you to see just what a huge difference a little bit of makeup might make on your final outcome. There's totally 90s. So you just take a second and adjust it. You can even adjust um, the hair color on this app. So you just go in like that and check the effects. And um, you can change it to black and white or you can change it to... Ooh, that's so pretty. I think I might even do that. We're going to take a quick screenshot. What do you think? Ooh, like that maybe, or maybe like that. Huh. Alright, so that's pretty cool. So you could even just, like that, hold that there and just kind of make your little mark as to where you want the branches to go. And then um, if you want one that's got color on it, you know then you can um, all you have to do is change it to a different one you can go in and edit it in like um, Photoshop or mirror lab will let you change the hue so that right there is the hue so if you were looking to do edit this on Photoshop you would just change the hue Okay, so this is really pretty. Ooh, that that's that's really nice too. I kind of like that. See, I had this um go into like a twilight type of time frame because I had the little moon here and just throw a couple little stars in there. I love that. And for the guys, we can, if it's a child that, you know, maybe you're like, this doesn't really look like the kid that I'm trying to paint. <laughs> well, let me check this hair color and see if we can adjust it a little bit. So, you just go in and change it. Oops, no, not like that. All right, let's check over this one over here. Okay, so this is, this is really cute. And if you use a darker lipstick, it'll let you see if the lips are looking right. See, hers are a little off, but it's hard to tell why they're off. So if you put the swatches over it, then you can kind of see that this is too much. So you just kind of make a little mark there that that right there is going too far. So that's where you make your cut. So the center of the eye always lines up with the center or the end of the lips right there. So this is too far. And then she has Okay, so the center of the lips are here, right below the center of the eye. And this is a really good app to tell you if everything's looking right on the eyeliner and the makeup. See how our eye is just a little bit too big? So we're going to bring it in a little. And you can use... You can't just use any old pencil on an oil canvas. You have to use something extra smooth, something that's not going to put a lot of holes or damage on your canvas. You just barely want to touch it, just to mark your little 
ter area. Like right here, you know there's a little spot right here. Comes down and then there's a lip all the way down across. So you just come in and you de define those little bitty details. Just like that. And then we make the edge of the eye. And if you have trouble figuring out where the eye should be, there's an app in, in here, in this app, there's a feature under, um, if you come over here to makeup and you scroll over, it says eye color. And if you use an eye color that is, see how much bigger that is? See, it's too big. All right, so her eye, okay, first you have to back up a little first for the eyes. It's got to focus. All right, so it's almost correct, but let's put it on a different color just so we can see. Okay, so it's a little too big. So we need to come in with white right here. See, when you back up and let it focus, it's moving. That's why it's not focusing. The, the canvas is moving. It's stopping it from focusing. All right, so. I can just see that it really needs some, some of this right here. But that's not what we're doing. We're going um, to put the eye color on. And that looks really good. I, I like that. It actually looks just spot on. We just really need to darken up the edges a little bit. And uh, when we get a little white, we'll be able to cover that excess up. We got to make a little white line right here. I actually do have charcoal, but it's a little too rough. And I would rather come in with a fine brush and... But we're just going to mark this with pencil for now, and then I'm going to make another video where we actually paint it. So, anywho, you just go in, and you can just scoot them over, scoot the little eyes over to each person, and then you can see how off or right on it is. So, we can see that this one's way too big. And doesn't she look just like her mama? <laughs> like a little clone. So cute. So it's actually really hard to um, differentiate just exactly what it is about um, a, kid, a kid that is not an adult if the adult doesn't have any wrinkles. So you have to be literally, um, you have to measure the shape of the face. See how her, um, her head is going to be a little bit smaller. Just a little bit bigger. See? Mama's head is just a little bit bigger. And that is mainly the huge difference. See how I've got it coming up? See, that, that means that the head, the forehead isn't big enough. The eyes are always directly in the center and directly below the center of the eye is the, the end of the lip right here. And this little cutie is just a little bitty girl in this picture, like five. I'm not going to use any names because I want people to be able to recognize them without me telling you who it is. Okay, and for anonymity. All right, so you basically just come in here and draw these little lines in, make everything um, squared up. So from the center of the nose and the edge of the eye, that's perfectly how it's supposed to be. So if it goes from the center of the nose I mean, the end of the nose goes to the center of the eye. Exactly. All right. And then 
we're just gonna go ahead and draw on these eyelashes real quick because um might as well so we're gonna go back over to um looks and we're gonna use some pretty um makeup so that looks really good i like that let's see what else we got I kind of like that. Ooh, it's very 90s. I want to do that for me. All right, we're going to go boop, just like that. Nowadays, these young girls, they do the um masks uh, that kind of like presses your eyelashes back against your skin. And then whenever you... um take it off it kind of leaves it um sticking straight up making your lashes look quite a bit longer than they actually are even without fake lashes and um i know how much us young gals just really want long lashes natural natural long lashes so i'm gonna give these extra long lashes because my sweet little friend has very long, natural lashes. Okay, so we gotta get her eyes just so. They're a little off. This one's looking down a little bit and it should be looking at the camera and it's going too low. So I'm gonna have to get some paint out to fix that. But, um, let's take a second. And draw these lashes on. Mm. All right, and these eyebrows are really not black they're more brown all right let's get the paint out it's looking a lot better all right i think i got everybody's fine lines in there All right, let's check these, all right? And boys get lashes too, y'all. Don't scrimp on the lashes on the boys. Because it really does give it a much three, more three-dimensional feel with the lashes on there, so. Sorry. There we go. And you just kind of decide where to fix it. If it's right or if it's too much. All right, y'all bear with me. Trying to decide what to do. there's two lines here this line and then you put skin color here I 
I'm like, is something burning? Yes, the neighbors are probably burning something. Okay, so this looks way whack. We gotta back up a hair. Okay. So this is too far. We've gotta bring it back just a little bit. Okay, so the nose goes straight above the center of the little eye. So that is where the eye starts, right there. This goes up and it stops right there. That's where your eye starts. That's where you start your eyeliner. And you just roll it on over. And then just like you were, um, doing makeup, which I want to thank uh, Jamie French for giving me the 411 on how to do makeup in today's day and age because I'm still 90s all the way. Alright, so we go up. We're going to fill this in with paint and then we go, now this, um, this little trick, you always go up, up, up. And then down, 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 and then up, up, up. Okay, and then we start over again. We go, and, and also, I think that her eyebrows are a little lower. Maybe a lot lower. So her eyebrows are much lower than mine. So, that might be alright, but we're going to have to pull up a picture of her. Because I think her eyebrows start quite a bit lower than mine. So go up, 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 up. Down, down, down. And then up, up, up. Alright, and then you fill it in. Now, why can't I do this on my own eyebrows? I have no idea. I have no idea. I cannot do this on my own eyebrows. All right, and where do the eyebrows start? So here's the, here's the nose, and we know that's the, everything starts with the nose. You start with the cross in the center of the eyes, just like that, and straight in the center of the nose. And then if you have a piece of paper, what I like to do is I get a piece of paper and mark it. Alright. I'm going to cover up my phone because my art room is a huge wreck. I'm getting there though. We're getting it organized. Alright, so you take a piece of paper. And you mark from cheekbone to cheekbone, like so. Dun, dun. And then you fold it in half. Which, um, let me just set the phone down. And then you also want to do that in half and mark it. Because that's going to be the center of your eyes. And I like to just tear it right there. Mm -hmm.
All right. Now, you kind of just have to totally wing it if your person is facing to the side, then, you know, that's pretty much it right there. If, if they're facing to the side, then, all right, so you, you just start by um, going to the center. The center is right between the nostrils. And then move it on up. Sorry, it's glitching out. But yeah, it looks like it's lining up. The one on the right needs to come over. But let me hold this down. So that's what I usually do. I just kind of see if it's where it should be. You gotta hold down the center though. It's, it's gotta be right in the center. Makes you wonder if Pennywise was maybe um, an artist. All right, so there you go. So you put your center of the eye there and the center of the eye right there. Let me turn this off real quick so that you can see. So I took the piece of paper and I marked from here to there. Then I folded it in half and I folded it in half again so that I make sure that her eyes are correct. See, this one's too far to the right. It's just ever so slightly to the right. So I need to move it back over just a hair, and that's gonna make this whole face um, seem right. So let's, let's just move it on over a hair. I think it's supposed to be. And then, all right, let's step back. I feel like that already does look better. Already feels a little bit more right. And then we just go down from the center to here. This goes down, back up. And then we're always going to draw this line here. There's always a little shadow right here. And then however high you make this side, you gotta make sure that the crease is basically at the same angle that the eye is at, that the makeup goes on the eye. So from the center of the edge of the lips, straight into that little crease there is gonna go like this just like you would if you were putting on eyeshadow so you know you make the line like that and this line you make it just like that look at that you can tell it's off I need Jamie French over here to tell me what to do <laughs> okay. and then from here the center of the eye we go like that. All right, this has got to be the same height. So we come down like that. And down like that. And then from there we go like that. Okay, perfect. All right, and now she looks like her. Once I fill this in, okay, so I could really do this with an eraser right now if I wanted to. But the best thing to do is to put the paint um, on there. But yeah, I'm going to go in with the eraser and kind of um, erase it. Because you don't want to leave a layer underneath your painting. Because if you leave that layer underneath there without scrubbing it out, What's going to happen is it's going to cause that paint to peel off at some point. 
And if it gets hot enough, especially if you live in the middle of the south. So, um, what do y'all think about this glitter? Should we leave the glitter? Or should we take it off? I think we're going to make this a night scene. Alright, so tell me if... Um, okay, let, wait a minute. I didn't tell you where the chin goes. Alright, so I didn't tell you how to do the ears and the chin. Alright, so let's do the ears. Okay, so I actually have to look in the mirror... Okay, so from the bottom of the ear to the end of the mouth is exactly um, the right spot. So right here is the ear. And from here, directly over, there's the ear. All right, and you don't have to draw the whole ear. Um, you can just leave the hair over it, but if you have to draw the whole ear, then, whoa. Let's scoot this. I got a new art caddy. Do, 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 do. And I got a lazy Susan. So yay for that. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish this up. We've got to check where does the chin exactly go. So from the center of the eyes to the so your ears is exact center. The center of your ears is the exact center of your face. Alright? I think. No, no, no. Hold on. Yes, which is exactly in the same as your eye. Um, so. <laughs> Let me look in the mirror. Not quite. Okay, so it's a little bit higher. So the top of the ear is going to be just level with the top of your eye. So here's the top of your eye. And the top of your ear is just level with that. So you can color all that in, or at least this. We at least want to col color in where it's black, because the ear goes there. All right, and then the top of the eye to the top of the ear, right there. All right, and then from the center of the eyes, you take your... All right, so the best way to do it is to um, see if it's level. So you take the center of the eye and you just measure it like that. See how it's uh, gonna be exactly the same and the, the eyes are the center of the face. So you have to kind of imagine where the very top of the scalp is on a woman because her hair's there. So, That's the top of the head, not the top of the, not the very top of the, um, painting, but the, just the very top of the head. So that's the hair. So that's about right. That's about right. Okay. And, but look at this one. The very top of the hair is, so there's the center, right? Now the top is going to be exactly the same from center. See how the, um, well, I guess that's about right. It could come up a hair. It, it could come up a hair because that's the top of the scalp right there. And there's going to be a little bit of hair past that. And then below that is the forehead. Like from here, this needs to be forehead. This is half. From the bottom of the chin is halfway the eyes. So there's the very top of the head right there, right where that little triangle is. That's it. So then the hair is there. That's the very top of the head. And then the, the line, you know, you can literally just look in the mirror and kind of guess. It's about that far. It's 
about this far. So it's almost right. We're just going to have to move it down just a hair. The actual forehead line needs to come down just a little bit. Alright, so let's check the next one. Here's the center of the eyes. Center of the eyes. Center of the face. Center of the eyes. Alright. So, you just take your pencil and look at it right, put it right in the center, but move it over to the center and check where exactly the chin goes. So just because it's not the same doesn't mean that maybe your chin's not too long. You really need a reference picture. So as you can see, this is, this is right on cue, but she's got these flowers in her hair, so it looks like it's way off. But really, um, that's just about right. All right, because you got to remember that there's about this much area between here and the back of the head. And we may or may not leave the flowers, because if I do, I'll have to finish this flower. And yeah, we're probably going to leave the flowers, because look, they're almost finished. All you got to do is put a white line right down the middle of that, and you got some kind of lily. I think. I think these are poisonous flowers, I just realized. We might not stick with these. <laughs> oh no. Yes. Yes, we might have to swap these out for begonias or something else. Any suggestions? Maybe a magnolia. We are in the magnolia state. Mm, that would be pretty. Oh my gosh, that would be so pretty. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what about the lips? How do we know if the lips are correct? Eyes? Top of the eye? Top of the ear? You want to put like a little shadow right there, you know, because the ear is going to push the hair back and it's going to leave this little shadow area. And then at the bottom of the corner of the lip, and then you just do just like you would the eye shadow. It's like right here. This would be your ear. See, I already had it there once, but I painted over it. See, you can see where it was underneath the paint there. All right. And... On this side, you can't even see it, so we're not even going to worry about it. But it helps, because if you can see where it would be, then you can make sure that the other side which is correct. Which is probably why this looks all wonky right now, because I don't have that. See, this lip is too big on this side. It needs to have teeth right here. And then the teeth actually need a little detail. One two teethies and three little teethies and four all right so I um, know these people really well and I know what their faces look like because I've been working on this painting for three years but when I first started I had to have a piece of a painting I mean a reference picture to look at but this really you don't have to have a picture to fix this kind of stuff because, um, well, it's just, you know, it's more like math. This is mathematics here. Center of the eyes. See, this one's way too low. That's making her look a little off because it's too low. It's making her look like she went to the wrong hospital on a bad day or something. Okay. All right, so I do have some gel pens. I don't think you can put gel pens over these, but I'm telling you, they are so pretty on the... And they glisten. Okay, so that one looks better. This one, still something isn't right. So we're just gonna sketch it out. And you know, if you're not an artist and you really don't know what you're doing, um, you know, just pretend like you're putting your makeup on, you know, just put that makeup on and 
you don't even think twice about what it looks like when you're putting your makeup on, so. So this has got to be a little shadow area. This lip is not quite big enough. Now, um, how to draw the lips. So you draw a circle, the, big, the biggest circle, and then on each side of that you draw a little bit bigger circle. Because remember how the lips go up, and then a little bit smaller, two, three, from the biggest to a little bit smaller, to a little bit smaller, four, and then, boop, just draw your little line. So he goes, one in the center that goes, uh, it lines, the circle lines up, just imagine there's a circle here, if there was... If her face was really shiny, there would be a circle right here if the light was reflecting from behind us. So therefore, you're going to have a circle right here, and then imagine that there's another circle right here, about the same size as a reflector, right? That's going to give you your idea. Now, some people's lips are just naturally a lot bigger than others, and you're going to have to get a reference photo to tell if you've got those details right. Then you have to shade this underneath the lip, at least a little bit. It's going to give you the three-dimensional effect that you need to make it look like a three-dimensional person. So why, do you, why would you rather paint it straight on than um, at an angle? The reason why I do that is because if you paint it like this, then when you move around the room, the eyes can follow you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So thank you all so much for watching and we're going to do another video later um, after my phone charges that has um, a little bit about how to lay this paint on. Okay. Now, uh, if you're doing this to your painting right now, and you just need a few minutes to to get her done. So I don't know if you all have one of these, but you have to get um you have to get a let me go grab my box, hold on. I'll be right I'll be right back, okay. I'm still recording. <laughs> I texted you. Okay. So we're going to buff this out. Okay, so it's been like 20 years since I actually had to buy one of these, but if you have one of these paper pencils, this is what you use to just kind of um, shade it out, alright? So what you want to do is go ahead and take those eyebrows that are so crazy looking and just like... It's almost like an eraser, but it just um, breaks it down. It breaks down the pencil a little bit, and then um, it makes it easier to um, paint over. Because you don't want this thick, thick um, lead underneath your paint. But you do want it to guide you, so you can break it down a little bit. And um, some of the prettiest art I've ever seen did this. Honestly, I normally don't do this, but it, it seems like there's just no finishing this without actually putting these lines in here. 
Um, so you take this and then see, once you've been doing this for a minute, then you have this dark, dark um, pencil on top of the, um, on top of the paper, right? This is paper. This little thing right here. This is actually rolled up paper. You can buy it, and um, I don't know what you call this stuff. Let's see. Hold on, I'm trying to read it. Made in Taiwan. Okay, so this is an 8945B. <laughs> okay, this was my grandmother's, and I'm pretty sure she's had it for 50 years. And, um, and or some other artist that has passed away, such as um, Ruben Register left me a lot of his art supplies, and this might have been, this might have been his. Thank you, my ancestors. Um, me and Mr. Register are both kin to the Mad Potter, and if you're an artist and you don't know who the Mad Potter is, well, shame on you. You need to go check out the Mad Potter in Ocean Springs or Biloxi, Mississippi. They have a a beautiful um, area for a setup for him. And they have a pottery class that you can come and take. Alright, so now that we have this black on here from snuffing this one out, we can go in and fix these ones. So you just go right up above there to the left. And for men, you're gonna do it exactly the same way. Just um, maybe a little bit thicker, depending on the person's hair. Some men, like like um, this man here, he has, it's gonna be very hard to do this because um, his eyebrows just kind of blend right in. Like this is too dark. I'm going to have to go in and put light paint over that for it to look right. And then I'm going to have to come in and put skin tone over this because, um, as you can see, the paint has gone too far. <laughs> but I've got some new brushes, so all is well. And um, I'm going to have to come in here and finish these. But, look, I already did this with charcoal once. And I sanded it, that's why it looks so... So this this shiny stuff right here, you really can't see it in real life except for at an angle. But it is from using different mediums. So it's really hard to get around unless you... Um, you can sand it down and do it again, but you almost have to have just pure pigment in order for it not to get that shine on it like that. And um, it, it, you can do that on the skin tone and the texture, but on the actual details, you're gonna have to thin that oil paint out. Um, there are other, you know, types of oil paint that are made thinner, and but I don't really use that because, you know what, um, oil paint is very toxic to paint with. That's, that's, that's precisely why I'm drawing these details on right now so that whenever I get my paint ready, I can just put it straight on the canvas. I, I'm gonna have my mask on, and I'm gonna have good ventilation, and whenever, as long as you prepare it and you do everything just so, everything should work out. Um, because you, you don't wanna use, you can use liquid, but I really recommend walnut oil. That's what the painters that painted all their lives and you know, lived long lives, this is what they used. And I want to say it was like Da Vinci or Leonardo Da Vinci or possibly Michelangelo that said they used walnut oil. Um, I, uh, I mean, they didn't say that, but whenever you test um, somebody's art and you see, oh, okay, well, this, this was probably so-and-so because the paint is made of this and this and this. Well, you, you really can't go by that because even artists get poor sometimes. <laughs> even famous art, most famous artists were poor all their lives, all right? So you really can't go by that because uh, as to who made what. But anywho, it was a good thought. <laughs> 
All right, so last but not least, we're going to um, fix these ears right here. Okay, so see how this ear is way short and this ear is way long. Something's not right, huh? So this, so you gotta can imagine that he's not smiling. That's the bottom of his ear. It's a little bit too low. This one, so probably what happened was when I sketched it, I made one ear, and whenever I painted it, I did another ear. Because see how I didn't even finish this one? Sometimes you just get busy, or, you know, if you're working a full-time job, you definitely don't have time to, to paint. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry it's taken me three years. It's really not that long of a, it's not, it's not really that long of a process. It's literally just finding the time and the space and the money to get her done. <laughs> So if you have, um, if you've never painted before, I'm going to give you a little rundown. Um, you need a little cart to hold your goodies. Um, you need some walnut oil. You need some paint. I have just about every color paint in the world. And then, um... You need a color wheel, which I don't have mine in here, or I would show it to you, but you know what I do with the color wheel? I put it right here on the top of my easel. See how there's all those little holes in there? That's where you put your color wheel. And and um, how you decide what colors go, or whatever the foreground colors, the lightest color is, that's going to be your lightest color background color. Whatever the darkest color is, that's going to be your darkest color shadows. Okay? So, and then as it goes in, if you want it to pop, then you do the opposite. So, for example, instead of using pink, the opposite of pink is lime green. So, if I really want this to pop, then I could put some lime green um, shade trees falling over like that. Just one, like I was planning on doing that, all right, because we've got all these cool, um, and then if you really just don't know what to do with your painting, you know, they have all these backgrounds on this app. You can go in and check out all these different backgrounds. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me scoot it over to her. All right, so you check out the, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> check out the backgrounds, all right. Let's go to, um, I really can't get it to load the backgrounds. So you have to have internet for these to load. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Girl, I love those sunglasses, girl. Oh, did you see that? It said butterfly. Butterfly. Where is it? Alright, so it's not loading. My phone's about to die. That's probably why it's not loading. Don't do this when your phone's about to die. Because this thing really takes up everything. And you have to hit the save button before it goes off. Okay. So if you get to like 5%, you need to save it. Which I'm, I'm at 6%, so. Oh, okay. Cursed bride. Alright, so we're missing out on this background. Oh, okay. I see why. So there's a tiny little button close to your left thumb says background you press that and turn it pink and then it will automatically inlay the background oh my gosh that's so cute I'm doing it I'm doing it Did you see that y'all okay I took a screenshot and it's still working can you believe it alright so then you go to the next one whoops uh oh no no we don't need... Oh, cute. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, next. Alright. So, you have to hit the background button on every single one of these. So, see how I was saying if you want it to really pop? So, I really think that my girl, Fran here, would really like it to pop. But, I'm not sure. So, if you don't want it that bright, then, you know, you can, um, 
you can change the tone of it so that you can kind of see. Oops, okay, that's pretty cool too. Alright, so I'm sorry, somehow I, it's kind of glitchy. If you don't have good internet, this app is really glitchy. I just hope it does an alright job recording all this. So you have to turn the background on. Ooh, that's pretty, huh? Let's back it up. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work. All right, we're going to back up. Okay, so you just kind of imagine is uh of course we're not going to change the background <laughs> because we've got this beautiful ocean here, right? But I do really like the trees. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Sorry, kiddos. I really like the tree, and check out this background. Okay, so if you wanted to... I like how some of these are really dark. So even though that's definitely not the makeup I would choose for my gal, I really like this darker background. So if you wanted to add... Okay, so let me tell you a little secret about skin tone. If you're painting white, folks, then you need to put your skin tone, uh, the background color, as a kind of grayish tone. It's going to make them look more vibrant and more alive. Alright, just kind of ignore her right there with all that crazy makeup on. But see how much better that looks? That looks, It looks like she's got a tan. Whereas, whereas with this other background, she kind of looks like um, really pale, right? Pale in comparison. Actually, it looks like that's pretty dark too. Hold on. So really this is very dark because they're at the beach. But... Um, But you can adjust these different backgrounds just to see what colors you like the best. And even if someone um, pays you an arm and a leg for something, you should always go in and <laughs> try to fix it up a little and show them the, the colors, especially if you as an artist don't think it's going to look good. Because let me tell you, they will not buy it if they don't like it. All right. So, see, I kind of like um, the darker colors. I I'm probably going to keep the sea that darker color. Oh, I don't know. That's really pretty, too, huh? So, that looks more natural. The natural light is beautiful. And um, I do have to say that something I'm really having a lot of trouble with is finding something to seal art with and that doesn't, um, that doesn't have... A yellowing effect so you definitely want to have it more pink than white on your skin tones and um, you know because the white is going to turn yellow if you seal it it's better even not to seal it because um, unless you use wax or something that doesn't change colors because um, polyurethane and even most varnishes turn yellow I have paid an arm and a leg for varnish only to go visit my friends for years later and my artwork was yellow on their wall. And of course, um, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. You can, you can either choose to not varnish it and leave it exposed or you can um, varnish it and, you know, <laughs> just pray that it works out. But if you go to the art museums and you look at the old, old art, you know, they have like chunks of, um, it just crinkles up. All right. So you definitely don't ever want to paint on top of a wet layer because what's going to happen when you do that is it's going to crackle. I figured that out, um, uh, recently. I, I've actually been, like, if you use Mod Podge, so there's no reason why you should use Mod Podge as a background, mm -hmm. but if you did... You shouldn't do that. It's going to cause trouble. It's going to cause it to crack later, okay? All right, y'all, I'm at 2%. I've got to go. got to hit save, and I will see you later. Tell me what you think about these. If you'd like a commission, please contact me, and you have a wonderful day.